So before we watch a bit of a video and, and take, a, take a short break, I want to talk a bit about the history of uh, prison construction marketing uh, in Canada. And I'm going to go back all the way to the, to the beginning of the century to talk about this. Okay, so where the siting of federal penitentiaries uh, is concerned, uh, in the early confederation days when new provinces uh, were joining Canada, uh, most penitentiaries uh, were built by prisoners on crown owned land um, near construction materials. So in uh, British Columbia, British Columbia Penitentiary, uh, I believe it was built in, in 1880. Uh, it was built on an old RCMP um, barracks uh, in BC, in New West, Westminster. Um, in Saskatchewan, it was also built um, on government uh, owned land. Um, the Sask Saskatchewan Penitentiary built uh, in uh, Prince Albert, uh, which is uh, central northern part um, of the province of Saskatchewan. It was built in 1911. Prince Albert chose a penitentiary in their backyard over having the provincial legislature and uh, the province's first university. Uh, the capital of uh, Saskatchewan is Regina. Uh, the first university there is in Saskatoon. Um, so there was this idea that, that communities did want uh, penitentiaries in their backyard um, at that time. Now, as far as Kingston is concerned, there's probably folks here that, that know how this developed uh, better than I do. Um, but from my understanding of it, uh, the government, uh, if you look at their, their annual penitentiary reports, um, usually chose the site for facility based on the availability of government-owned land uh, the availability of construction materials and easy access uh, to prisoners to build the institution. So, just to go over quickly, um, this is Kingston Penitentiary here, and across the street, of course, is uh, P4W. Uh, and here's, I, I don't know the name of this waterway, so if someone could tell me. Um, here's where Collins Bay uh, is built. And in uh, the annual reports of penitentiaries in the late 1920s, in early 1930s, they talk about the transportation of prisoners uh, and construction materials up this waterway uh, to build Collins Bay Institution. Uh, the same thing when we go out to Joyceville and we look at the establishment um, of, uh, of, of Pittsburgh and Joyceville uh, institutions. It's up this waterway here. Uh, prisoners were transported um, to do uh, the construction there. Uh, and things I think Millhaven, uh, where Bath and Millhaven institutions are located, uh, it was the same uh, type of arrangement. But yeah, so stand standalone facilities uh, in Canada before the 1970s uh, were a fairly fairly rare uh, phenomenon. A few exceptions, like of course Warkworth Worth Institution uh, in Campbellford. Now. In the uh, 1960s, um, Prime Minister Pearson appointed, uh, appointed a Canadian committee uh, on corrections and they deemed that the existing maximum facilities like Kingston Penitentiary uh, were outmoded uh, to implement what they call the living unit model, uh, this direct supervision typing or variation of it. And they deemed these facilities to be um, unhygienic and want them to be replaced by institutions um, such as uh, they recommended the construction of Millhaven uh, and, Ar and Archambault to re replace these aging uh, penitentiaries. Of course, we know Kingston uh, Penitentiary never closed. So, as they established uh, Millhaven uh, and Archambault, Prime Minister Trudeau appointed uh, a working group on federal maximum security institutions 
um, to create the next wave of maximum federal penitentiaries. Um, so this, this working group uh, decided that they wanted to build penitentiaries uh, near urban centers uh, where prisoners are from uh, to promote family and community contact, um, to enhance the reintegration of prisoners uh, into society. Um, this is quoting now, to attract and hold competent staff, uh, to facilitate the use of part-time staff for things uh, like dentistry uh, and, and doctors and nurses and so on, um, to enhance prisoner access to other community facilities such as clinics, hospitals, uh, universities and churches, accommodate university field placements and research, and reducing the costs associated with transporting uh, the incarcerated. So this became the new selection, site selection criteria for the Canadian uh, Penitentiary Service. And the challenge, while it wasn't recognized really at the time, uh, was to find large urban centers or suburban communities uh, that were willing to become Penn cities. Uh, and the reason it became uh, challenging, uh, because as you all know, things such as the uh, Kingston Penitentiary Riot uh, started happening um, across the country. So Michael Jackson, uh, in his book, uh, Justice uh, Behind the Walls, talks a bit about this. Um, so this is good reference material if you want to find out what we can expect in our penitentiary system in the next 10 years. We don't learn from our history, apparently. <coughs> Critical Hain as well. Um, no longer barred from prison talks about uh, the different things that were happening in our penitentiary system in the 70s uh, and 80s. Um, during this time, uh, it, the 1970s in particular, it was characterized by an absence of human rights uh, behind the walls. Uh, there was a feeling of hopelessness uh, amongst prisoners. Uh, there was overcrowding, double bunking, um, and basically what we saw was violence erupt amongst prisoners as well as staff, hostage takings, uh, and riots. Um, so talking specifically about the Kingston Penitentiary riot, um, there was looming transfers to the Northern <coughs> institution. Uh, it was a facility rumored to have technology in place that would greatly restrict the movement of prisoners. Um, maximum security prisoners house at KP. Then initiated, for, for that and other reasons, a four-day uh, riot. Uh, the event garnered national attention with media outlets reporting uh, the extensive damage to the facility, uh, as well as the suppression of the riot by the Canadian Armed Forces um, and the human carnage that, that ensued, and I think um, you know, with the levels of double bunking that, that we're going to be seeing in the years ahead, and the fact that CSC just suspended uh, Commissioner's Directive 550 that sought to limit the use of double bunking. Um, unfortunately, we're reproducing the very same conditions uh, that led to these type of troubles uh, back at that time. So, with all this going on, uh, the Canadian Penitentiary Service, uh, now CSC, um, was looking to build these different facilities uh, across the country in, in what they deemed to be uh, locations that were closer to the large urban centers. So Lillooet, uh, Lillooet, British Columbia being an example, uh, London, Ontario being another example. They wanted to build maximum security facilities there. Um, of course, uh, in those two cases, those facilities were not established because the communities uh, essentially uh, put their voices together uh, and, and said, not here. So in response to that, the Canadian Penitentiary Service produced a video uh, called Why Build, which I'm going to play.